Well, good morning. I'm United States Representative Kathy Castor. Uh, we're here on the steps of the federal courthouse today uh, to make a plea for the United States Senate to do its job. And I'm joined with uh, Susan McGrath, who's the executive director of the Florida Consumer Action Network, Anna Eskimani, who is with Planned Parenthood of Southwest and Central Florida, and Dr. Judith Ann McLaughlin, University of South Florida political science professor. Uh, we're here to urge the United States Senate to do its job and to hear the nomination of Merrick Garland, Judge Merrick Garland for the United States Supreme Court. As you all know, a few months ago, Justice Antonin Scalia passed away. There is a vacancy in the highest court in the land. A few weeks ago, President Obama nominated Judge Garland uh, to the court. Uh, and now it is time for the United States Senate to fulfill its constitutional responsibility and hear that nomination and vote on that nomination. Uh, this is clearly their fundamental responsibility under our United States Constitution. And here are a few facts. There are 300 days left in the administration, in the current administration, under President Obama. Every Supreme Court nominee since the 1980s has had a hearing and a vote within 100 days. So for the United States Senate to stall and delay is really unseemly. Uh, it is not up to the standards of our great country. Uh, it, there's a saying, justice delayed is justice denied. And that is what the United States and the Republicans in the Senate will be doing as they complicate this process. I serve in the Congress where the Republicans there have shut down the government. Uh, they have not been able to pass a budget this year. There's a lot of dysfunction. And I, it's appalling that they would take their dysfunction to the judicial branch, uh, to the United States Supreme Court, when there are so many vital cases in front of the court that must be decided. It's, it would really be uh, a disservice to all of our neighbors if they say we're not going to have the court, uh, we're, the court's not going to be able to function for a year. Uh, that's simply untenable. So Susan, I'd like to turn it over to you. Thank you for organizing this today. Thank you, Representative Castor, and thank you for your important comments. Right now, due to a large number of vacancies in the Senate that continues to obstruct qualified nominees, there are not enough judges to hear cases in Florida. Currently, there are four vacancies on Florida district courts, with two more seats open this year. On average, these spots have remained open for more than 358 days. Outstanding candidates nominated by President Obama are being held up by the Senate. Civil cases back up, the criminal justice system slows down, and people have less access to justice. So as Representative Castro said, we are here today to draw attention and ask Senator Marco Rubio to please do his job it's his constitutional requirement to fill these vacancies, and we ask that they do so. That is why courts matter. Thank you. We will turn it over now to Anna Eskamani from Planned Parenthood. It is my pleasure. Good morning, everyone. My name is Anna Eskamani. I'm the proud senior director of public affairs and field operations for Planned Parenthood Southwest in Central Florida. Planned Parenthood has 11 health centers across 22 counties, and we serve one in five American women. It's obvious that women deserve a full court. Uh, just this past month, we heard oral arguments for arguably one of the largest cases on single access to abortion since Roe v. Wade. Last week, we heard a case on oral contraception. We deserve a full court. And it's time that the obstructionist mentality in Tallahassee and in D.C. stop immediately. Looking here in the state of Florida, there are several litigations in motion regarding women's access to reproductive health. Not only do we have 24-hour mandatory delay from last legislative session that's now going to the Florida Supreme Court, we also have House Bill 1411, the governor just signed on Friday, with many parts of this bill not being constitutional, and us knowing that very well. And so these are going to be more laws that impact women across the state. They're going to be moving up the judicial ladder. And yet we continue to see an action by our politicians in D.C. who are out of touch with the needs of American women to hold their political agenda above the health of women and families. And enough is enough. So we're honored to be standing here with Congresswoman Kathy Castor, our coalition partners, not just here in Tampa, but across the state, asking our elected officials to represent us and the women of this state and do what's right. We need to close this seat. Uh, Garland, Judge Garland is an excellent candidate. 
He has the support of moderates across this country. And we need our we need our elected officials to do their job. If not for Florida, let's think about Florida's women. Thank you. So one of the weaknesses of the Articles of Confederation was that we had no federal judiciary. And the framers of our Constitution universally agreed that we needed a Supreme Court of the United States that was going to resolve important federal questions. The impact of not confirming the Ninth Justice on the Court effectively means that we may not have a Supreme Court because we may not have a majority of five judges to resolve important cases. And there are many important cases on the Court's docket right now. Issues from abortion, contraception coverage, immigration and deportation, labor rights, a whole host of cases right now that may not be able to be resolved this term. They may need to be held over to next term. If the Senate doesn't act now, and it could affect this term, it could affect next term, because the next president and the next nominee wouldn't be in place until well into October term 2016. And if they create such a backlog, maybe it affects even into a third term. And this would be unprecedented. It's It's been more than 100 years that I can think of that there would be a vacancy on the court like this. Um, and it is simply not true that the Senate hasn't acted on Supreme Court nominees in presidential election years. I can think of more than a dozen justices of our 112 justices who were confirmed in presidential election years, including Justice Kennedy and Justice Cardozo and Justice Brandeis. A number of our justices were confirmed in presidential election years. So it is true that elections uh, matter and they're important. We have a president who has nominated a candidate, a federal judge, a very distinguished, um, and the Senate needs to act on that uh, nomination. Um, now it is true that this presidential election can have a very important impact uh, into the future of the court. Um, there are actually three justices sitting on the bench right now who are at or above 80 years old. So voters should be concerned when they vote in November what their vote might mean for the future direction of the court. But the fact remains that we have a court right now that may not be able to do its job. The upshot may be that we shut down the federal judiciary from being able to resolve important cases unless the Senate does its job. I've been reading today and I see uh, Senator Mark Kirk from Illinois. He's actually meeting with Judge Garland today. Uh, do you think that's kind of a step in the right direction of it? Yeah, to Senator Kirk's uh, credit, he's going to actually sit down with the nominee. Uh, he's probably the most endangered Republican senator uh, in the United States Senate right now. Uh, his, his, he's doing his job. That's important. It's, it's in direct contrast to uh, Senator Cornyn, Republican senator from Texas who said, we're going to treat this uh, nominee like a pinata. I mean, the, what has our political discourse devolved to these days? Uh, people are crying out for more dignified consideration uh, in politics, and now we're talking about the United States Supreme Court. And since the 1980s, every nominee has had a prompt hearing and vote within 100 days. There are 300 days approximately left in the current administration. The United States Senators need to do their job. This is their fundamental responsibility under the Constitution. Joe, Joe Biden, of course, there's a tape out of him in 1992 talking about this in a different direction. If you, if Mitt Romney was the president right now, would you still be saying the same things you're saying right now? Absolutely. I mean, and uh, Vice President Biden's comments back when he was a United States Senator, remember, that was an entirely different context where there wasn't even an opening or vacancy on the court. So that was more political talk. But the facts are the United States Constitution required, you know, the, the, the responsibilities are pretty clear cut under the Constitution. The president nominates a court nominee. The Senate advises and consents and votes. Uh, and for, so for the United Republican senators to say, we're just not going to do our job. We're going to continue to obstruct. We're going to go down the path of, in, in essence, shutting down the judicial branch is completely untenable. And we're talking about people's lives here, okay? Here's the politics of it. Everyone knows the politics of it. But think about how much money many of these plaintiffs and organizations have put in to bringing a case all the way to the United States Supreme Court. Uh, one of the issues that uh, will has been heard or is supposed to be argued is President Obama's executive actions dealing with immigration, uh, the deferred action for DREAMers, 
here in the Tampa Bay area, we have 3,000 students that are DREAM Act students, that their lives hang in the balance. Will they be able to stay in the United States legally or not? Women's health issues are fundamental. These are just a few of those important human issues that come before the court. The Senate Majority Leader says they'll be happy to vote on someone, but they want to, but they want to let the American people have a say and a vote first. During a presidential term, there could be a vacancy on the United States Supreme Court. The Constitution says a president then nominates, um, and the Senate will vote, and that's the way our democracy works. And if once someone throws a wrench into the democratic process, we're no better than, than countries with dictatorships. The, we are a country of laws, not men. We're not a country where people just get to decide willy-nilly. We have, we base, uh, functioning government on a constitutional framework, and the Republicans in the United States Senate have to fulfill their duties and follow that framework. Okay, can you tell we're fired up? Yeah. <laughs>